All right, and here we go. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. I want to thank you so much for being here, and I apologize again for the technical difficulties this morning, um, but I appreciate your patience and I appreciate you being here. So we are going to go ahead and get started because I do want to honor your time. And so this webinar is for creating Classflow desktop lessons. And thank you for being here. My name is Courtney Salazar, and I am a Classflow consultant. And I've been with the Classflow team for about a year now. And my role is to help Classflow users, educators, all across the Western US. And prior to being in this role, I myself was a classroom teacher. I taught English language arts for nine years. I taught four years of high school English, and then I taught five years at the middle school level. And, and now I'm using Classflow. So thank you again for being here. And uh, like I was mentioning earlier, um, as educators, you know, we're good at adapting, we're good at rolling with it. Sometimes things don't go the way that we've planned. So again, I just wanna thank you for your patience and, and for being here. So we're gonna get started. So in just a moment, we'll take a look at Classflow Desktop. Let me minimize this. All right. So this is Classflow Desktop here. And um, I know we had a, a Old, older incarnation of Classflow Desktop a while back, but um, in about February of this year, we came out with our newest version of Classflow Desktop. And uh, once you download Classflow Desktop, and I'll talk about how to do that in just a moment here, but it's gonna live on your desktop, imagine that. This little icon over here, this is what it looks like. And then when I double click it, I have this wheel. And I can, if I grab the black part of this little circle here, I can drag it anywhere around my screen I want, which I really like. And if I click on this menu button, which we sometimes lovingly refer to as the hamburger, then I'm going to be able to expand that wheel and look at all of these different tools, okay? Now, some of you may already have Classflow Desktop, um, but if you don't, I do wanna show you where you can get it. Also, I just wanna pause real quick. I realized that I forgot to mention um, a couple of things. First of all, you will be recording, I'm sorry, you will receive a copy of this recording um, along with our other Camp Classflow sessions, and we will be sending that out within seven business days. So it's gonna take us a little while to compile all of these videos, and uh, but you will receive a recording of this that you can watch on your own time. And also you will receive a certificate of attendance for being here, uh, especially because you really wanted to be here, and we appreciate that. So you'll get a one hour uh, PD certificate from Promethean, and Lastly, oh yeah, I wanted to mention that if you have any questions, please put them into the chat window. And um, if there's time at the end, I really hope that we could delve into those questions and maybe do a little Q&A. So at any point, if you have any questions, please just put them in the chat and time permitting, we'll take a look at those towards the end, okay? So you may already have Classflow Desktop downloaded. If you don't, I don't really want to encourage you to go download it right now this minute, um, but you, I just do want to show you where it's located, okay? That way you can kind of still be present and be here with us. And so when you're on the Classflow homepage, let's go ahead and get logged in here so I can show you, move that wheel off to the side. All right, and here we go. On the Classflow homepage, once you've logged in, right in the middle of your screen, you're gonna see this little button and it says Get Classflow Desktop, okay? Now when you select that, you're gonna be able to download for Windows or Mac. And if you have questions while you're downloading it, again, certainly don't feel as I need to do that right now, but I'm just letting you know, if you still need Classflow Desktop, you can always um, talk to our wonderful support team if, you're, if you have any issues along the way as you download, okay? So just wanna make sure that you knew where to locate that. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize here. Okay, so Classflow Desktop is really cool because you can use it online and offline. So that's perfect for, um, schools or districts or even places within the school that have kind of subpar internet, you can still use it to create and deliver lessons offline, as well as do some other things offline. Right now I'm offline, so my wheel is gray, okay? And you'll notice that some of these little buttons at the bottom are grayed out. They are not operable right now because I'm not logged in, so I'm offline. Um, but today we wanna take a look at building some lessons, okay? First, I just kind of want to go through and mention some of the cool things that we're going to be able to add to our lessons and some ways that we can kind of snazz them up and customize them. Classical lessons, you can build them for any subject area, any grade level, okay? So we're going to have things like you're about to see some stuff like title cards, section cards. Some teachers like to use these to 
separate or distinguish different parts of their lesson from one another. You can also change the size of our card. So depending on your screen resolution, what you prefer, we're going to be able to add text and shapes. We're going to be able to look at uh, adding some different tools. And we can run through some of these once we're in the lesson builder. Um, some favorites and some things that if you've been using Active Inspire for a while, you might even notice some of or some similarities between these. And we'll take a look also at some actions. How can we add those actions that we know and love, especially if you are a Active Inspire user, okay? All right, so now we're going to go to Classflow Desktop. We're going to kind of take a look at building a lesson. I'm going to minimize this browser here. Now, if you have Classflow Desktop, you are certainly welcome to um, open yours up and mess around in Lesson Builder along with me. But if you just kind of want to watch and see what I'm up to, that is totally fine as well. So when I expand this wheel here, I have a few different options. The one I, we're going to take a look at today is how to build a lesson. So I'm going to use this Browse button here. Looks like a little file folder. I like that I have recent resources up here. So lessons that I've created or I've been using recently are going to show up here. Also a couple of activities. Now I can browse my computer for files, I can convert files, and hopefully if we have time, I'd like to show you how we can convert a Active Inspire flip chart and continue to modify that and build within Classflow Desktop. Okay. But for right now, we're just gonna make a brand new one. So I'm gonna click Create New, and we are going to make a new lesson. All right, so now I'm gonna be taken here to Classflow Desktop Lesson Builder. And I know I kind of keep hearkening back to this, but if you are an Active Inspire user, I want to liken um, our lesson builder to like the design mode of Active Inspire. Okay, so this is going to be very design modey. This is where we're building the lesson. So before we get started, let me just kind of show you a couple of things right off the bat. I'm going to move this wheel again. Okay, so here I've got my first card. Uh, I know different programs, they call them different things, but um, slides, pages, what have you, we call them cards here in Classflow. Also, I'm going to be able to add some card notes. So this would be maybe just notes to myself if I want to make little reminders as I'm going through the lesson of things I want to do or questions I might want to pose to the class, times I might want to pause, or you know, if we're going to maybe intersperse some other activities or types of things, I can always make notes here. And you might notice this is kind of very PowerPoint-esque. And I can adjust the height of these notes. And if I click on this teeny tiny little arrow over here on the right, I can just drop them down entirely. And that just affords me some more space. If at any time I want to add those notes, I can just click open and add them there. Okay, so I like a nice big space to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize those. Now a button that I would love to show teachers, especially as they're learning Classflow Desktop, is up here in the top right. We've got this little cog up here. Well, you know, let me just check something real quick. Okay, we're doing good. All right. So when I select this, I can do show icon and text. And this is great for learning Classflow Desktop because it's going to give you all of these tool names. So rather than hovering over and wondering, huh, what does this one do? What does that mean? Just uh, go ahead and, and do yourself a favor and give yourself those names. Now, later on, if you feel comfortable or you just prefer a more minimal look, you can move it back to just showing the icon only. Okay. You can even toggle, just give yourself a little bit more space like that if you want to get rid of that header. Okay and zoom in, zoom out, that kind of thing as well. All right, so let's see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of run through a couple of the tools here, and I'll start maybe with some text. So let's do something maybe like, um, Making change. Maybe I'm going to make a lesson about how to make change. We might have some math problems, and um, maybe we're studying um, coin values and monetary values and how much things are worth and how we can calculate prices and uh, make change. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can change your font and so on here. And what I like is that it's going to remember your preferences. So if I uh, always want my font to be blue and Arial and 36, as soon as I go to make a new text box, it's going to remember all of those parameters that I've already set. So I like that. I don't have to keep going in and changing it all over again. Okay. Now, of course, you can kind of format this here, and I'll move it over. Also, we've got, ooh, we've got these little lines that will help you put it right in the middle, which 
I'm not a control freak at all. I certainly don't need that. I'm just kidding. I actually love those red lines. Um, and also we can change our card resolution. I don't know that I've mentioned that yet. I'm going to go up here. So maybe I want to do more of like a widescreen. I kind of like this one, but it's just personal preference, really. I'm going to apply that. Now I'm going to have nice big cards. Okay. Now we've got our fill tool up here, so I can always change the color. Oh, blue on blue is probably not going to work. We could do like light blue, I suppose. Let's see. All right. And always be sure to click back to your select, otherwise we'll start filling in all kinds of stuff. And we also have shapes. So I know this is, I'm just kind of adding a title right here, but um, I can easily add a shape. And then just like the text box, actually, if I want to make another one, it's going to remember my preference. So of course I can always go back in and change that. But um, then from here, I can kind of resize and so on. I can make them different colors. Oh, another thing I do want to show is once I have a shape selected or created, I have this object here, I can always also change things like the border color, uh, the opacity, the width of the border. I can kind of snazz up the border with a different type of line and so on and so forth, okay? So just a couple of things to note here. Now let's say I wanted this one's getting, a, I want to kind of keep the, our space nice and fresh as I show you some of these tools. So I'm going to go ahead and add another card. There's a couple of ways I can do this. If I click on this cog here, I can add another card. Or if I come down here to the bottom left-hand corner, that's also a way for me to add a card. Okay, so now I've got a nice fresh card here. Um, pen tool, I do want to kind of talk about that real quick. So we've got our pen, and of course you can change the color on that guy and so on, and you can be drawing freehand. Or another thing that I like that has been somewhat of a new development is that we can change the drawing style. So let's say that you want to make, in fact, let me change the color here too. Let's go with purple. So we've got our color palette, pen width, and now drawing style. So let's say that I wanted to make a really quick little graphic organizer. I know that maybe when we get to this part of the lesson, we're just going to make a little pros and cons list or for and against. I can draw these straight lines. And again, certainly me, no, not, not, I'm not a control freak at all, but drawing straight lines uh, is really helpful. And we got a ton of teacher feedback saying, hey, we just want to be able to draw some straight lines. So um, I really like that feature as well. I'm going to add a new card here. And I think I'm still on pen. I should probably go back to my select tool. Okay. Now you've also, you can toggle between pen and highlighter. You've got your eraser. Let's take a look at the toolbox here. We have a lot of different things that we can add on to our cards. Maybe I'll add a ruler. And once I have this on here, I can always move it around. I can rotate it and resize it. Okay. Um, graphic organizer, just a note about this one. You'll notice right now it's grayed out. Graphic organizer always needs to go onto its own card. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, just because of the way the program is designed, it always needs to be on its own card. Revealer is kind of cool. You get this um, way that you can slide things off. So that's great for um, and you can move it, you know, up, down. So if you're blocking or chunking text or instructions for kiddos, if you just want to kind of move that down, that's a handy one. And Spotlight gives you this, oh, it will replace. Sure, let's do it. Gives you this kind of cool James Bondy vibe. And you can change that circle and so on, okay? Now you can also clear things if you want to clear what you've done so far. I'm going to add a new card. And also, I just want to show you how I can insert, oh, camera. Um, if you have a camera installed on your device, you could take a selfie, I suppose, or you can also pull images from your computer. Now, another way that you can do that is to click on Insert here. So I'm going to select Insert. And it's going to ask me what I want to insert from my computer. So let's say that I maybe have some images. All right, so maybe I want to add. Whoa, world's largest dime. Okay, we'll come back to that guy. Let's also add a quarter. It's a bit more reasonably sized. Good job, Washington. All right. Calm down over there, dime. We'll make you smaller. All right, and so on and so forth. And you can see how I can kind of keep adding these resources in. Okay. I do want to kind of touch on object actions. I know I'm moving a little fast and furious here, guys, but we also started late. So again, I want to appreciate, I appreciate you being here and I thank you for your time. If you have questions, um, pop them into the chat. Maybe we'll have time to cover those. Now, I also have a Classflow activity here that I built in Classflow Desktop. And maybe I want to add this activity into my lesson. 
Let me actually put that one on a fresh card too. Activities are really easy to build. They're fast. Um, we, I unfortunately can't go through those today, but I do believe that there's another webinar happening at some point today um, about activities. So when you get that really long, um, what's the word I'm looking for, playlist of all the videos from today's Camp Class Flow, keep your eyes peeled for activities if you want to learn more about those. Okay? And again, we'll send that video out within seven business days. Okay, so I've got my activity here. And yep, it's loading onto the card, and we could play this. Um, and we could go through that. Now I will have to go to play to kind of preview what that will look like. Okay, so you can add class flow activities in here too. Now I know actions are very popular in Active Inspire, and so I do want to kind of touch on how we can add some basic object actions. Okay, I'm going to move my wheel. Remember, we're still totally offline. Oh, and because we are offline, Gosh, I should have done this ages ago. Okay, we should save this because, you know, um, sometimes things happen wonky, unexpected things with your computer, like today, for instance, and then you uh, might lose your lesson. So let's go ahead and save. When I click Save, I'm going to have the option to designate where on my computer I would like to add this. Um, I think it defaults to be in your documents, and you can see I already have some other ones here. So maybe I'll just add this one to it. This is my making change lesson. And it's going to save as a special file type. This is going to save as a .cfl, and that stands for Class Flow Lesson. So that's the file extension. I'm going to save it here on my computer. And it's spinning, and I'm going to get a little green confirmation check mark. Hooray, it's saved. So now that I've saved it once, I can continue to save as I make changes and move along. Okay. All right. So I do want to kind of touch on the object actions real quick. So I'm going to grab my quarter here. And you'll notice with any object, now this could be a shape, it could be a text box. Oh, see, it saved my preferences there. We've got the blue Arial font. But you'll notice this little cog with anything that you add to your card, any type of an object. If you select this cog, you can do a few things. You can reorder it, which is kind of like layering, so you can move things um, onto different layers of your screen. Also, you can rotate things. Okay, and you can just also grab this little green dot and spin it around. That works too. Anchoring is like locking from Active Inspire. So this is pretty neat that you can select if you want to anchor everything, if you want to anchor just the movement, just the ability to resize it or rotate it. So if there are, um, let's say, instances where you do want to send things out to your students and you do want them to be able to manipulate these objects, you can decide how much or how little you want these things to move. Okay. Now, also, if I go to, let's see, I'll go back up here to this one. I can also select on the card cog, and I can anchor everything and lock it down like that, too. So that's just another way that you can anchor things, okay? So let's go back and take a look at actions here. Now, if I go to actions, I'm going to have uh, a number of actions. Let's see how many we have here. Five different actions. Uh, many of these were some of the favorites and the most commonly used ones from Active Inspire, so we brought them over. Now, you'll notice that some of them do go by slightly different names. So, show and hide, I think, used to be maybe something like hide and reveal. I might be getting that one wrong. Uh, reordering, again, is just kind of like layering. So, let's say when you click on something, it's going to move to a different layer. Drag and drop to container. So, your containers, that's uh, what this one is now renamed as. Clone on drag, we're actually going to use this one here in a sec. And that's going to be um, drag a copy and go to card, meaning that, for instance, when I select, when I click on this, when we're doing the lesson in class, it's going to take me bloop, to a different card within the lesson. Okay. So I'm going to do clone on drag. Now you can see over here that this has already been selected. So I know that the object is going to, I'm sorry, the action will be applied to this particular object. So I'm going to do clone on drag. And I need to save that. Now, I won't be able to preview that and see how it works here in Lesson Builder, but if I go up here to Play, I'm going to go ahead and select Play, and now I'll be able to preview it. So you'll notice with these, I can't really do anything with that one, but, action type and editor, okay, yes, sure, sorry, thanks, I just saw the little pop-up there. Okay, yep, let's take a look at that one more time. So now when I'm playing my lesson, I can go through and see what it will be like, but this is where I'm going to be able to test out those actions, okay? So when you're in the builder, that's when you put the action on, but 
uh, you can't really see how that's going to work until you're playing it. So I'm going to, this is my lesson preview. I'm going to exit back out. Okay. And let's start. I know I keep making more cards, but it drives me bonkers to have. Oh, sure, you're very welcome. It makes me a little crazy to have so much stuff on there. Let's insert another picture. And let's see, I had some other ones in here. I know it's a little early in the morning. Well, for me, I live in Colorado, so I'm coming to you guys from mountain time. It's a little early in the day for ice cream sandwiches, but um, it's summertime. So here we've got a picture of an ice cream sandwich. Maybe I'm about to make a word problem um, where I want my students to calculate how much change they're going to have once they buy the sandwich or something, okay? But the question, a question just came in, how can we, um, how do we get to the object actions? So over here, I'm going to select on this. I've got my object. I want to put this action on the ice cream sandwich, okay? So I'm going to select this little cog, and I go down here to actions, okay? And then I'm going to select which action that I want. So maybe when I click on the ice cream sandwich, boom, this time I want us to go to the next card, let's say. Actually, let's do previous card because I don't have a next card really queued up in line over there, okay? And I can see I'm putting that action onto this object. I'm going to save it. And now when I play it, now I've got a little icon here that just kind of denotes that there's something going on with this object, action, object, sorry, <laughs> with this object. Now when I play it, I'm going to be able to see how this works. This is kind of like a preview, okay? And sure enough, when I'm in my lesson and I click on the ice cream sandwich, boom, takes me back to that previous card, okay? Now, I know for practical uses, that doesn't really make any sense. You're like, why would we click on an ice cream sandwich and go to a page full of quarters? It doesn't. But I think <laughs> hopefully you're just understanding. I'm just trying to show you a lot of the features and tools that are in the lesson builder. Certainly, this is not a very cohesive lesson that makes any sense at all. But um, I know you guys will give me some grace. We're just kind of playing around a little bit here. Okay. Now, again, I've made a lot of changes. I'm going to go ahead and save this. All right, now I do want to point out, actually let me get to a card where you can see a little, oh, I can see a little bit easier here, okay. So, so far all I've been able to do is just save and play or preview essentially. Now if I want to upload this and add it to my, my resources in my Classical account, I would need to go ahead and um, log in in order to do that, okay. So if I click over here on this cog, this is going to be a good one to show you guys because I also do want to point out help and support where they're located, okay? So when I click on that little cog, again, when I expand my wheel, that's the tool over here all the way on the right. Okay, click on the cog. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to be able to adjust settings and quit. This is when you're ready to quit the whole thing. Go away to Class World Desktop, click quit. But help, I do want to point this out to you. Um, we have, if you select here, you'll be taken to a whole library of videos, short little videos, guys. These are like 45 seconds to maybe one minute long. And they will, they're on a whole different range of things. So let's say like actions and you're like, hey, I, I want to watch another video about how to add those actions or um, how I can import things from my computer, existing resources, that kind of a thing. Um, we've also got a help website, and you can also contact our support team. We have a whole support team at Classflow that is solely dedicated to assisting our Classflow users like you. And I know as teachers, a lot of times we like to, um, you know, we kind of pride ourselves in being the experts in things. Sometimes it's hard to ask for help or ask questions, but really, guys, I want you to know that we are here for you. And um, if you're wondering about something or you're struggling or you just have a question or even some feedback, um, let us know, okay? Okay, so I had mentioned logging in. So I'm going to go ahead and select this cog. Now I'm going to log in to my Classflow account. And ooh, let me change that. Okay, I use a little demo account when I'm showing stuff off to people. Okay, and I'm going to log in like so. Okay, now my wheel has turned orange. So now I'm logged in. You'll notice too I've got a little bit of additional functionality here. Okay. So now I can connect students. I know we're not going to look at that right now, uh, but we do have other webinars. And again, I know I keep saying this, but you're going to get a video of all of the sessions. And so, whoa, Ooh, we might have somebody getting connected there. Interesting. Okay. All right. So now once I have, sorry, let me just stop that real quick. Okay. Now, once I have logged in, 
I've got my lesson here. Now I'm going to be able to upload this. So if I select upload, just thinking about it, working on it, depending on how much your lesson is, it may take a different amount of time. Okay. And now it's unloaded to my class flow resources. So moment of truth, guys. Let's see if it worked. When I go to my class flow account online, I should have that lesson here in my resources. It takes a minute to copy over. And I know we're ah, Yikes, this is how I always felt in the classroom. Like, how are we always out of time? How are we already running out of time? Oh no, okay. So, and here we go. We've got the Making Change lesson. So I've got my lesson here, full of ice cream sandwiches and many quarters. And I've also got a little folder, and that's going to uh, include things that, like the image of the ice cream sandwich, let's say, okay? So it's gonna bring in any types of resources that it can that were built into the lesson too. So if I wanna use that ice cream sandwich thing later, I can. Okay. So I just did want to show you how you can upload that to your Classflow account. All right. I'm going to move over here real quick. Okay. Um, so real quickly here, I'm just going to go ahead and exit out. I did briefly, briefly want to touch on how you can import, um, I'm sorry, convert a flip chart and then modify that to use it as a lesson. So I'm going to go back here to the Browse button. Again, this is a file folder. This time I'm going to convert file to lesson. So if I have a flip chart I want to use, it's gonna prompt me to decide, okay, well, where's your flip chart? I'm gonna use this one here, Los Colores, just kind of a practice basic Spanish about different colors and the Spanish words for colors. When I select open, it's going to, kind of depending on the size of your flip chart, may take a moment, it's going to convert my flip chart into a Classflow desktop lesson, and it's gonna take me back into this lesson builder. Okay, so from here, if I wanted to add things or modify things, change anything about my lesson before I use it with students, uh, then I will be able to do that. Here we go. Again, kind of depending on the size of your flip chart, um, it may take different amounts of time. Okay, and here's my flip chart, but now it is a Classflow desktop lesson. Okay, so I could go ahead and play this with my students. I could, we could go through it together. So let's say I wanted to play. I've got this pen tool here. I don't think I've touched on this, but I can use these arrows to flip through my cards. Also got a pen tool if we want to be filling things in as we go. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and exit back out of here. Now, when I click save, you might be wondering, okay, well, she hasn't saved it as anything yet. So where is that saving to, right? Let's go ahead and exit back out of here. It's going to save your Classflow desktop lesson in whatever the same location was that you had your flip chart. So for me, I just had my flip chart hanging out here on the desktop for easy access for today. But it's going to make that desktop lesson, so I haven't changed anything about the flip chart, still exists, but now I also have this desktop lesson and it's going to just automatically save in the same location. So whichever folder or destination on your computer you have. Okay. All right. Well, um, I know that I had promised a little bit of time for, um, for Q&A, and I apologize if we um, have not got to some of those questions. Um, I will do my best to kind of take a look back through them later. I know we're also taking a look at um, compiling questions that participants have had today and maybe making a separate, you know, um, webinar about most frequently asked questions, that kind of a thing. So uh, I want to thank you so much for being here today. I apologize again for this technical snafu, um, but I really appreciate everyone for being here. And um, please don't forget, if you are playing around with desktop and you have questions, we've got that help, that support team for you, and the videos and the articles and so on. And um, thanks again, and I hope everybody has a really enjoyable rest of your summer.